Elon Musk finally confirmed another big piece of news for Tesla. Do you remember when he said three significant improvements to FSD will roll out roughly every two weeks should be really shining bright by late April or early May? Well, ladies and gentlemen, not only are we having a new point release rolling out right now, but Elon Musk just confirmed that indeed FSD 12.4 is a big release and should arguably be V13 and it's coming soon. And if you remember, Elon said that one of the point releases releases earlier was going to be a big deal and it was so elon's credibility when it comes to fsd has been improving significantly i was starting to have thoughts that maybe elon was again over promising with this post here but look i just got 12.3.4 and for me it drives noticeably better and now we have another point release or i guess in this case point point release already going out to other people and i'm starting to think that that post from elon musk about a month ago is going to become true and if you like good tesla stock news like this click the like button and subscribe the current version can already do all of my basic driving it only really struggles during rush hour traffic and the way this was written it implies that before late april it's not going to be shining bright because the improvements are going to be major so i'm really looking forward to this new 12.4 version i'm really happy with how fast the progress has been made and look we are having random people that before you would have never seen talking about tesla's fsd at least positively after tonight's drives i'm getting convinced we are months away from robotaxi august 8th might be more than a reveal it's freaking incredible if this is 12.3.4 then what is the next point release going to be and what is 12.4 going to be like is driving better than many people i know today another version is better than most people two versions and it's godlike buckle up tesla peeps let's go it is already doing every drive itself without intervention in most cases for omar not in 10 years today and for me as long as i don't go downtown that is yeah it's a pretty true statement i don't need to intervene for safety reasons but i do want to point out fsd v12 as of right now today is definitely not safer than human driving absolutely not but we are having people with amazing fsd experiences for sure and that is probably only going to accelerate and here's dana just had another stress-free drive to the hospital using fsd with zero disengagements i arrived relaxed focused and ready to help my patients in these conditions i think fsd can probably go for hours without any safety related interventions these don't seem difficult conditions it's only if i go downtown to rush hour traffic that i have more serious issues and by that i largely mean fsd just does something rude but not something that would crash a car in the us we see 1.35 fatalities for every 100 million miles traveled tesla fsd has now traveled over a billion miles as such we would have expected more than 14 people to have died if it was no more or less safe than an average human but there are no known fatalities yet we are looking at the emergence of a technology that is already preventing hundreds of crashes on net and has potentially saved more than a dozen lives already i don't think people have wrapped their head around this however please note that for example the v11 i never even attempted after a little while using the software in very difficult conditions where my chances of crashing are much higher because i just did not have any confidence in the software to handle for example construction zones not with v12 i actually like changing lanes with fsd on because it can see everything around me while i can only look forward look back i can only look in one direction so while largely you sort of how to throw away this statistic because if you drive during easy conditions only then of course you will have less fatalities but going forward i think the data is going to be much more accurate and these fsd drives are getting more and more impressive 45 minutes of driving without ever turning fsd off 100 fsd drive i think relatively soon we are likely to see multi-hour drives the zero interventions i think right now if you spend hours and hours driving you can probably pull it off already maybe not in rush hour traffic but under conditions like this i think so and it doesn't have to beat san francisco i think i could do it in vancouver i would probably need to try a few times i would need to get a little bit lucky but the real challenge will be doing it during rush hour traffic downtown if you can do it for three hours Wow, my mind will be extra blown then. Oh, but man, how about the March of Nines? It's easy to get FSD to a place where you can drive without interventions for, let's say, 10 hours. But if once every 10 hours, the software tries to kill you, 
it's no good. And if we get stuck there for a long time, that's terrible. But look at AlphaGo, for example. In October of 2015, in a match against a really strong player, it became the first computer to beat a human professional Go player. In 2016, computer beats Go champion for the first time. And just two years later, after 2015, basically no human can beat the computer anymore. And then AlphaGo Zero was introduced, which surpassed the previous version of AlphaGo in three days by winning 100 games to zero. So we quickly went from, oh, you beat this one pretty decent human being. Oh, Okay, cool, but how about beating the champion? Eh, to them beating the champion, to now being completely unbeatable. So I'm not really that convinced that the March of Nines is going to be the main issue. And by the way, the game of Go has more possible moves than atoms in the universe by quite a lot. It's not a simple game. It could sort of say there are many edge cases. And Elon dropped some major news here. It may be possible very soon, said Elon about FSD basically coming to China. So that's really good. If Tesla does need a lot more data, the easiest way is basically to try to get the data from other countries as well, because effectively you just double the amount of data that you're getting probably basically almost immediately. Have other people to drive a bit differently in China. So I'm not sure if you want to merge the data sets that are coming from the US and China into one, because you might have some interesting driving behaviors in North America then. I live in Vancouver and we got a lot of people from Asia over here. And sometimes I think to myself, I think you're driving over here like uh, as if you lived in China, but this is Canada. But because we know Tesla is no longer compute constrained, maybe it could try to have two different FSD versions. One version, okay, combine all of the data from China and North America into one version and then compare that to the version that's based just on the... Um, data from North America and see which one drives better. Maybe if you merge it, maybe actually it's just fine. Maybe then it will handle edge cases better. Imagine being any company that's trying to compete with Tesla and seeing the world's best-selling vehicle just become another 4% more affordable. If I was a Tesla competitor, I would be freaking out right now. The Model Y just got $2,000 cheaper in the US and traders are likely going to see downside in the short term for the stock, so they are going to sell. But Elon Musk just posted this directly promoting the Model Y and it got 35 million views already. And the gas savings are very real. That's why so many Uber drivers use Tesla. Tesla also cut the price of the Model X by 2000 and this is the least expensive that the long-range Model X has ever been in Tesla's history and on top of that it qualifies for the $7,500 tax credit. Model S prices have also been lower by $2,000 in the US. I would expect the same in Canada and perhaps in some other countries as well as Tesla is undergoing this restructuring because is Tesla actually really dropping the price here or is it just updating the price? By that I mean Tesla offered inventory discounts for a long time and not everyone who wants to buy a Tesla is going to go to the inventory first and check, oh, I could actually get this car for this cheaper price? No. Many people just go to the Tesla configurator, see the price, oh, too expensive, nah, not interested, and they don't see the actual price that you can pay if you get an inventory vehicle. Now, of course, Tesla could start offering inventory discounts again as well, but so far we haven't seen them. Here's the full history of Tesla's pricing since 2023. I also wouldn't be surprised to see more big moves like this from Tesla in the next maybe 30 days because we know that Tesla is going through a restructuring. So keep that in mind. But I think removing inventory discounts and lowering the configurator prices, while it's not great for the stock in the short term, effectively, it actually, I think, lowers Tesla's costs because you add more complexity when you do inventory discounts. You have to have a few more people just looking at inventory discounts, deciding, okay, we need to increase the inventory discount. Oh no, we need to reduce it. It's just a bit more work. I'm not saying Tesla is going to save much money, but a tiny little bit, 
Yeah. Among the bulls, James is basically a bear, and even he agrees that there is not going to be much of an impact on average selling price, but he does point out that this also opens the possibility of more inventory cuts later in the quarter on top of these cuts. We are going backwards again, he thinks. James also replied to this comment, the uncertainty and messiness of Tesla's pricing is going to keep buyers from taking the plunge in the space of a couple weeks. We have seen prices increase, inventory discounts removed, price decreases, end of referral program, etc. on top of all of the negative news in general. To which James replied with true price stability is key. However, I would like to point out that with Tesla, when there is bad news, it's always overhyped eventually and then the stock goes down too much and then it bounces back because something happens and then things just suddenly change and then there's the opposite. The stock goes too much, too high, too quickly. All I'm trying to say is keep your head cool and think. Here and there, Elon Musk, of course, will make some mistakes, but if you look at his track record, in the end, he always comes out of the crisis swinging and winning. Here's what I mean, things just get too negative. Look at how stupid this headline is. The Cybertruck's failure is now complete. Now you would think this is a headline from a year ago and two years ago, maybe you could write this headline and some people would actually have believed it. But no, this was written just now. Uh, and they're talking about the accelerator pedal, but uh, in, that's not, I think, the main point of the article. There are people, however, that don't really follow Tesla closely but they are invested and they might see this and they might start thinking oh maybe i should get out of tesla but because we follow tesla closely we know that there is tremendous demand for the Cybertruck because we see these auctions and Cybertruck gets sold for about double the msrp that just does not happen with vehicles that have no demand anyway overseas tesla is not really cutting the price but it is offering much lower interest rates for example in Germany, Tesla is offering 2% interest rates down from 6.5% previously. We got so much pretty important news. Unfortunately, very heavy Tesla obligations require that the visit to India be delayed, but I do very much look forward to visiting later this year. Yeah, I did present the question of how is Elon going to be focused during the earnings call if he is all the way there in India. I mean, you can still pull it off, but this earnings call is going to be important. And Elon is a bit of a superhuman being, but I mean, there's jet lag and all of these other things. Looking at the last few earnings calls, many don't have high expectations for Elon's behavior on the earnings call, but look at what James is saying. Elon's fear of losing his compensation package means we should expect to see maximum Tesla interest slash engagement on X and possibly his best ever performance on the conference call next week. And Troy to that says it was a good idea to have the annual shareholder meeting on June 13th because we won't have the Q2 delivery results until July 2nd. In Q1 2024 we had 387,000 deliveries almost which is much less than the 400 123,000 ish deliveries in Q1 of last year. Similarly, Q2 will have fewer deliveries than the 466,000 in last year's Q2. This means we will have negative year over year growth for two consecutive quarters. But if FSD keeps making such fast progress, will it matter? Maybe yes. But it's a valid question. Hmm. Tesla will be ending its referral program in the US on April 30th. Omar hosts that Tesla quarterly numbers are absolutely horrible and that they post a net loss. I have cash and I am ready. I want to own Tesla AI. James thinks it's not going to happen. Yeah, I think it's unlikely that Tesla is going to lose money. Extremely unlikely. James thinks there are some good points here. Gene Munster is bracing for shares of Tesla to go lower after the report because consensus deliveries for 24, 25, and 26 are likely too high. My long-term positive view is unchanged. Is there someone who would do a better job than Elon Musk leading Tesla? Most people, 81 percent of them said no there isn't anyone who's better the poll had 6,000 votes and about 10 percent of the people had no opinion so the actual number in this specific poll of people voting no is going to be higher if you exclude these people Stephen Mark Ryan did a quick summary reasons for Tesla shareholders to oppose Musk's fairly earned compensation for doing the near impossible and creating massive value in the last five years number one lost money betting on Tesla options and have not recovered emotionally or financially don't use leverage ever.
please. And if you do, if you lose money, please don't blame anyone. Number two, deeply envious of Elon. And number three, communist. Did I miss anything? And Sawyer did what he thinks is one of his most important posts ever, it appears to me. I feel some Tesla investors don't fully understand the significance of Tesla's upcoming shareholder vote on reinstating Elon Musk's 2018 CEO compensation package. It's a very important vote. This is a long post, but it needs to be. Initially, the compensation package was approved by 73% of Tesla shareholders, which was structured to align his incentives closely with the company's performance. It could not be gained, and he couldn't sell the new shares from the package for five years once exercised, which ensured his interests remained aligned with Tesla shareholders. Despite nearly everyone saying those milestones would be impossible to achieve, Elon achieved them, and today Tesla's stock is still up 550% and revenue 9x since the package was announced. Elon was sleeping on factory floors in 2018 to ensure Tesla didn't fail. Soon after the ruling became public, Elon said that he is uncomfortable growing Tesla to be a leader in AI and robotics without having 25% voting control. He added that unless that is the case, he would prefer to build products outside of Tesla. Currently, Elon owns about 13% of Tesla outright, but reinstating his 2018 compensation package would bring him closer to about 20% of ownership. Failure to pass Elon's 2018 compensation package again could weaken Tesla's position in appealing the judge's ruling. This would also make it more challenging to create a similarly structured new compensation plan to compensate for the lost package. Eric Talley, a professor at Columbia Law School, said that if the upcoming vote passes, it could make it easier for Elon and Tesla to win on appeal in the Delaware Supreme Court. And this is the part that really infuriates me. The plaintiff's lawyers in the 2018 compensation case will walk away with around five billion dollars in tesla stock if elon and tesla lose their appeal do you think they deserve that money over elon absolutely not in my opinion tesla shareholders are shooting themselves in the foot if they don't vote for this because if the vote doesn't pass it significantly increases the risk that elon might step down as tesla ceo and or create technologies elsewhere it's, it's not really a, a question partially it would happen to some degree. This could very likely negatively impact Tesla's stock. I mean, no mistake, Elon is extremely valuable to Tesla and its shareholders despite all the drama. You know, a lot of people have concerns about Tesla's stock performance or Elon's behavior in the last couple of years, and that's valid. But it's essential to recognize that Elon's leadership has been instrumental in Tesla's success and innovation and will continue to be. Projects like FSD, Optimus, Sabotrack, etc. would not have existed without him. How did Apple do after Steve Jobs? left in 1985. This shareholder vote isn't about enriching Elon. This is not a cash compensation package. It's a stock option package. It's about acknowledging his contributions and ensuring his continued dedication to Tesla's future success. Failure to reinstate the package could have far-reaching consequences. Elon doesn't want more Tesla stock to be able to buy houses, yachts, etc. He doesn't buy that stuff. He wants this stock to increase his overall Tesla ownership to ensure that outsiders can't negatively influence the company and dictate its future. After all, they weren't the one sleeping on the factory floor to ensure Tesla became successful. What do they know about AI, self-driving, etc. compared to Elon? Given the gravity of the situation, it's crucial for all shareholders to participate in the vote, especially retail shareholders. Traditionally, retail shareholder participation in annual shareholder meeting votes hasn't been as high as institutional investor participation. If there was one time to increase retail participation, it would be now. Voting is simple and can be done for your brokerage starting the week of April 29th. It only takes a minute or so. Contact your broker to make sure you get the voting documents. Could I be wrong in suggesting that if this upcoming vote to reinstate Elon's 2018 compensation package doesn't pass, Elon might leave Tesla or create technologies and products elsewhere? Sure. But do you want to take that chance? This isn't a Steve Jobs slash Tim Cook 2011 situation. To some degree, this is a vote of confidence. Do you want Elon Musk to remain at Tesla or not? It doesn't mean that Elon is going to leave Tesla, but it would be a signal, hey, Elon Musk, the shareholders don't want you here anymore. Do you want 
Tesla to send that signal to Elon Musk? I don't. It's likely that this vote does pass, but I don't think investors should get complacent and assume that. In my opinion, voting yes on reinstating Elon 2018 compensation package gives Tesla and its shareholders the best chance at seeing shareholder value increase in the future. I'm actually a bit more skeptical than Sawyer about this actually passing because, I mean, did you see Leo Cogman, the largest retail Tesla stock investor? He's a multi-billionaire and he said he's going to vote against this compensation package. And Dylan says, yeah, I totally agree. It really seems like people aren't comprehending what could happen if this were to go south. Very important to vote your shares. And look at this poll from Electric. Should Tesla shareholders reinstate Elon Musk's avoided $55 billion pay package? No, said 69.5% percent of the people of course i really don't think all of these people are tesla style holders who voted but i'm also reading comments under my videos and there are quite a few people that are going to vote against so if you are voting for make sure that you actually vote all in tesla stock investor multi-millionaire jason deball says voting in favor of elon's compensation package will remove a ton of uncertainty and will rally the stock. I will make a bold claim and say that Tesla basically never delivers on FSD or Optimus if investors vote against Elon's compensation package. We are shooting ourselves in our manhood with a 50 caliber on an OnlyFans live stream. This is a no brainer. Any shareholder who votes against this has a strong inner Ross Gerber that thinks they can run Tesla better than Elon. Tesla is extremely well run if you look at the company itself and aren't fooled by the stock price. Eventually the stock price will break out again. Be patient. I said previously that I would sell all of my Tesla shares to someone like Ross who was voted onto the Tesla board. As we can see from his recent post, having someone like Ross on the board would have been a complete dumpster fire. Well, this is way worse. And I will probably sell all of my Tesla shares if this compensation package isn't approved. Or if I even think it won't be approved. And I'm not the only one because if this vote fails, Tesla will have been captured by idiots already. If investors are lucky, Tesla will enter a long winter similar to when Steve Jobs left Apple between 1985 and 96. That's the best case scenario, he thinks. Even if Elon remains at Tesla after a no vote, his mind will be elsewhere. It already has been to some degree. You know why? Because he hasn't been paid yet for all the hell he went through during the Model 3 ramp. And it's not just about the money. It's about the vote of confidence that we support him especially after he's done so much for his investors. It makes absolutely zero sense to not pay the greatest CEO the world has ever seen who achieved the impossible in what is likely the greatest business story ever told, what we overwhelmingly agreed to pay him in 2018. Up to this point in Tesla investor history, the closest possible position in the Tesla poop show was the front row held by long-term buy and hold investors like me who experienced zero returns between 2014 and 2019, constantly edging bankruptcy, no profit, EVs will never work, going private at $420, etc. Or anyone who has been forced to sell shares. But this time, we won't just have a front row seat in the Tesla poop show. Everyone will be in the actual poop show. And for those that say, well, if you approve the package, then uh, that will dilute Tesla's shares by a significant amount. But also think about this. If people like Jason DeBolt sell, uh, what kind of an effect would that have on Tesla stock? Jason is not trading Tesla every day. So these are not shares that are being traded daily. No, th this will introduce new shares into the market basically that have been dormant for years. I see a lot of Tesla shareholders and Elon Musk fans claiming that Elon will quit Tesla if shareholders don't reapprove his compensation package. Fred is a reporter from Electric, by the way. Number one, as far as I know, Elon has not said that. That's an assumption. Number two, in fact, in the litigation over the compensation package, Musk actually said that he had no intention to leave Tesla with or without the package. He said that he is committed to Tesla for life, though that was years ago, things might have changed. Now, I remember reading some of the court transcripts from a while ago, and I did not really quite have the same impression that Fred is portraying here. I remember reading things like, a lot can happen in five years. This was specifically about Elon negotiating the Tesla compensation package and the five-year clause being added for Elon not being able to sell the stock for five years after exercising 
these options. And Elon also mentioned something like, well, if he doesn't want that value to degrade, he would have to pay attention to Tesla himself, or he would have to find someone who would be able to take care of Tesla, but a lot can happen in five years. So the impression that I got from that was Elon is not planning to stay at Tesla for the rest of his life. I mean, definitely not as the CEO, maybe with some limited role, yeah, but not in a role where he has to pay a lot of his time and attention to Tesla. So I absolutely disagree with Fred here. I think that's fear mongering, trying to put pressure on shareholders. It's not fear mongering. But regardless, I think those shareholders should also ask themselves, what will Elon do if the vote passes? As far as I know, he hasn't commented on that either, but we can use some historical data here, like what he did last time he exercised large stock options from Tesla. He sold tens of billions of dollars worth of Tesla shares first to pay taxes and to buy Twitter. Guess when that happened on the chart below. Well, it was basically when Tesla stocks started dropping seriously. So for the shareholders concerned about what Elon will do if the vote doesn't pass, ask yourself what Elon will do if the vote passes also. And there is one crucial piece of context missing from that. Elon waited until the last moment to sell. He had to do that because he needed to pay his taxes. There was no other way to do it. So if we are talking about immediate effect on Tesla stock, assuming that Elon does the same thing, it will be years from now until Elon sells uh, that stock. And well, factually speaking, this is sort of right. In practical terms, I don't think it is at all. As far as I know, Elon has not said that Elon will quit Tesla if shareholders don't reapprove his compensation package. I am uncomfortable growing Tesla to be a leader in AI and robotics without having 25% voting control. Enough to be influential, but not so much that I can't be overturned. Unless that is the case, I would prefer to build products outside of Tesla you don't seem to understand that Tesla is not one startup, but it doesn't simply look at the delta between what Tesla does and GM. This is not Elon replying to Fred, by the way. As for stock ownership itself, being enough motivation, Fidelity and other own similar stakes to me. Why don't they show up for work? So while Fred wasn't factually wrong, in practical terms, uh, I think he's not exactly right. And Omar, massive Tesla bull, said this. Those who are advocating for canceling Elon's pay package are advocating for the destruction of Tesla as we know it. Shareholders vote carefully. The feature rests in your hands. Jason agrees exactly. This is not an exaggeration. And if shareholders vote to take back the incentive package offered to Elon in 2018, how can Elon be sure that Tesla is a safe place to build AGI? If shareholders are against him, how can he be sure they will vote with him on things that really matter, things that could affect the fate of humanity? Of course, he would assume that he wouldn't be able to trust shareholders, most likely. So the way he would go about things would be probably quite different going forward. It doesn't mean that Elon would definitely quit, but he would just do things in a different way. Someone says Tesla employees are building AGI, not Elon. But if Elon wasn't there, they would be building cars. Gary Black is strongly for reapproving Elon's compensation package. Just pay the man, he says. Meet Kevin disagrees with Gary Black that the vote is likely going to go through. He says the original approval then promoted hope and optimism of potential share improvement. And number two, today there's frustration, fear, and less hope. I don't see that's going well even though no plan is likely worse spite may prevail so vote please everyone if the tesla compensation package for elon is rejected by shareholders and elon leaves the company what percent of tesla engineers will quit and either retire or work elsewhere the most popular choice was 26 to 50 percent and for that says more than 50 percent within 12 months without a shadow of a doubt and i have a question are these people leaving? Do you think these people would be the best? Or do you think uh, these would be not the best of the best at Tesla? I, of course, appreciate all of the Tesla employees and everyone working at Tesla. However, I do w want to point out that if Elon was not at Tesla during the Model 3 ramp, would Tesla have survived? Would the people working at Tesla today, would they have a job at Tesla today? I think a very strong argument can be made. No, none of them would have a job today at Tesla. However, Elon will definitely continue to Elon staying at Tesla. NVIDIA is down $213 billion today. That was on Friday. Rookie numbers, says Elon Musk. Rookie numbers. And make sure to click the like button. The shadow ban seems to continue, but not on this 
other Eclipse channel, yesterday's video got 34,000 views already. And that's largely because you guys are clicking the like button. That really helps. So thank you so much for that. In a way, the YouTube algorithm has shown itself to be a Tesla bear, but together we are beating it. In the meantime, the latest videos on the big channel with 40,000 subscribers are only getting about 12,000 views per video. But the channel with under 3,000 subscribers is outperforming my big channel. So I don't know, but I might need to completely abandon that other channel. So I might just post going forward main daily videos just on this channel. So click the like button. Thank you so much for doing that. And thank you so much for subscribing. And I will see you in tomorrow's episode. Without such strong support, there's no way I would be rebuilding quickly. So thank you to all of you guys for clicking the like button, subscribing and commenting. That really helps.